Hello and welcome to video 3 for week 5. In the first video for this week we talked about the dimension of span, and then in the second video we talked about some things related to span. But in addition to span, the other major way we get at geometric objects in this course is as, as a locus. So I also want to talk about dimensions of loci. And this is mostly an is issue of interpretation. What is a locus? It's defined by a number of linear equations and is their common solution. So a locus is no nothing other than a geometric interpretation of a system of equations. But we spent all of week two, four doing that, solving systems of equations and describing their solution spaces. And that's all a locus is. A locus is just a geometric description of a solution space. It's the zeros of some number of equations. So we actually already know the answer to this problem. The dimension of a locus is just the dimension of a solution space, and that was the number of free variables in the solution. And in week four, we talked about description by parameters, a way of describing these as affine subspaces and offset spans. All of that was actually talking about loci. Now, one thing I don't think I pointed out in those videos we could point out is that this number of free variables is actually the number of total variables minus the rank of the matrix. And that's because of what we're doing with the row reduction algorithm. Each column with a leading one is a variable that's determined. Each And it, the rank reflects those because the rank is the number of leading ones. Each column without a, a leading one is a variable that's free. So that's not captured in the rank. So the number of variables minus the rank, those are the ones that are determined by leading ones, gives us the ones that are free. Hopefully this should make some sense for our notion of what a locus is, because a locus is all about restrictions. Equations are restrictions. And equations that correspond to rows with leading ones are necessary restrictions. When we talked about spans in the first video, I talked about trying to identify what was extraneous, what was redundant. The same is true for loci. Sometimes if I give you a loci of four equations, not all the equations are necessary. If they're all necessary, we do expect the dimension to drop by four. That's the ideal thing. Like spans, spans we expect to be built up. And if all the directions are independent, we expect the span just to be the number of directions. With loci, it's the other way around. If all the equations are dependent, we expect to have that many restrictions and each restriction drops the dimension by one but we have the same problem of redundancy. Row reduction solves that for us. We change the equation to a matrix. Anything that leads to a row of all zeros was a, an equation that was redundant in the original system. You can actually get rid of that equation entirely and have exactly the same solutions. The equations that are necessary are the ones with leading ones. So the leading one tells us that that equation actually does something, actually does imply a restriction. And of course, if there's a zero equals one equation, the loci has no solutions whatsoever. The key idea here that we're subtracting the rank, the fact that the number of solutions is the number of variables minus the rank, reminds us that a locus is about restriction. Ideally, we start in say R7, we have three equations, we expect to get a four dimensional space because we drop from seven to six to five down to four. But maybe we only drop by two if one of them is redundant. Once we get rid of the redundancies, we're still doing that subtraction. And each leading one is an actual restriction. So the number of variables minus the leading ones gives us the dimension of the locus. And let me return to an example we did last week just to make this clear. So here are two linear equations in R3, sorry, in R4 rather. We can, so that gives us a locus in R4. We expect this to be a plane because we have R4, we have two restrictions. So four minus two should be dimension two. Ideally, this would be a plane, but maybe one of the equations is redundant. I don't know. We put the equations into a matrix. We row reduce the matrix. We do a description by parameters. We found that there were two free variables here, and we had this description by parameters of our solution space. It is in fact a plane. It's an offset uh, two-dimensional affine subspace with three variables y and z which is good. We, we had no redundant equations. This is a complete and full description of the locus, the dimension being the number of variables four minus the number of leading ones in the matrix two, the rank gives us a dimension of two. 